So I play a lot of Gary's Mod. It was the very first game on Steam that I ever got to a thousand hours, and so far it's the only game on Steam that I've got to a thousand hours. And it was also the first Source Engine game that I ever played. Now, that being said, I have played a lot of Workshop map for the game, and I wanted to talk about four of my favorites that I think you all should play as well. Now, I am going to try to stick to lesser known maps instead of just going with the usual RP Downtown version 2 and GM Big City. But anyways, let's go ahead and get on with this list. Starting with probably the newest map on this list, we have GM Aliden HMCD. Hey guys, editing Wolfcast here. The map name is actually pronounced Eli Den HMCD, and I should have known that, but yeah, that's uh, all I wanted to say. I'm going to be pronouncing it Leiden for the rest of the video, so just keep that in mind. Set in a Half-Life 2 beta style setting, the main portion of this map is underground in both a bunker and a small little cave with stalactites and such. Not to say that there isn't anything above ground, of course, because there is, like a small little bus that protects you from the radiation that plagues the surface of this map. Warning. Hazardous radiation levels detected. There's also some destroyed roads with vehicles on them, and of course you got your various entrances to the underground section of the map. Speaking of which, the bunker is probably the highlight of this map with a pretty intricate ventilation system that you can crawl around in, and a pretty high amount of detail in just about every single one of the rooms in the bunker. Oh yeah, and there's also an AI node graph on here, so that way any sort of NPCs that use them will be able to work on here properly. GM Promenade is by far my favorite map on this list, mainly because it was one of the first ones that I played out of all of these. The map is situated in a mall in the middle of nowhere, and as malls usually entail, there are many different shops and restaurants and other attractions, as well as a working elevator, yes, that is a positive in my book, along with a basement and service tunnels that all kind of connect together. Now, that combined with the AI nodes included with the map can make for some really intense moments with the SCPs on here. Speaking of SCPs, trying to find this map again was a bit of a pain in the ass as I saw the same exact map under multiple names under different authors, so I don't even know if this particular map is the original one, but it's the one that I have a save on, so I'll just go ahead and roll with it. Anyways, Site-62, as you may guess, is a SCP-themed map, but this one is probably my favorite because of how unique it is. The outside area is snowy, of course, but there is actual precipitation that falls from the sky and it even makes the roads slick. Now, this isn't your typical SCP facility with the models, sounds, and textures taken from Containment Breach. This one is basically all original and it looks really good too, and it has its own, you know, unique art style, which I really do appreciate, by the way. It feels a lot like a more technologically advanced SCP Foundation built this facility, mainly because there are screens coming out of basically every orifice in this map. Now, obviously you have your four zones, just like an SCP containment breach. You got your light containment zone, heavy containment zone, you got the entrance zone, plus the surface. Each of these are still different looking towards each other, with light being mainly white, heavy being brown, entrance zone being somewhat orange, and the surface is... the surface. One unforgivable sin that this map unfortunately commits is having missing textures, which are on all of the windows on both sides, so it kind of defeats the purpose of having them in awe. Also, there's some elevators at the zone checkpoints, but even though they work perfectly fine, there's a black wall that prevents you from using them. I would say this is the second best SCP map if they fix the elevator and missing textures. Only reason why it isn't number one is because we have the Site-19 map, but you know, we all know what that map is, so... Let's go ahead and move on. RP Downpour Clear is a version of RP Downpour that is set during the daytime and doesn't have any precipitation. 
and that's about where the differences end. The map has three little areas, the uptown area, downtown area, and the underground area. The uptown area, as you might come to expect, is a lot more wealthy looking as there's a large penthouse that kind of overlooks the whole city with its own parking garage and of course, working elevators. There's also a nightclub which I haven't been in too much but all you really need to know is that it plays music and there's a bar and an office downstairs. Oh yeah, and you can't turn the music off either. Anyways, there's also some other small buildings like a hospital, gun store, train station, as well as the police station, which is probably my favorite building in the uptown area, mainly because of the interrogation room and the jail cells. And it also controls this gate here, which, you know, I thought was pretty cool. By contrast, the downtown area is obviously poorer looking than the uptown one, with more industrial looking buildings and a docking area for cargo. My favorite building here has to be this one with the skylight that you can get in mainly because of an experience I had on here with some SCPs and Half-Life 2 Resistance members. There isn't too much to talk about with the downtown area other than the two smaller buildings and the apartment, plus this bar that connects to the police station. Oh yeah, and this cool little place that looks pretty nice, assuming you have HDR enabled because if you don't, it looks stupid with the missing texture skybox. Now onto my favorite area of the map, the underground area. There's multiple ways of getting in and out of here, be it from a manhole, the sewers, or a hole in a random building in the uptown area, regardless of the way you get in. You're in for quite a surprise with this, as there are sewers, obviously, but only one pipe seems to have any sort of flow to it, and the others are all dried up, or just barely any water. There's two little mine sections here, or at least the starts of two little mine sections. There's also a room that doesn't seem too appealing at first, but this metal panel here actually opens up to a little cave, complete with a sleeping bag, and of course a stalactite, because it wouldn't be a cave without one. And the room that I find most interesting has to be this one here because it's filled with a bunch of crates and one of them is opened up to reveal a Left 4 Dead 2 AK-47. I can tell that because it has a flashlight on it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the three main areas. One thing I don't usually pay attention to is 3D skyboxes. The one on Downpour is pretty good, just there's a small little scaling issue because the roads are a little too fat. And the lighthouse is a little too large to be able to fit in the playable area, but that's honestly just kind of nitpicking. Overall, I think it's a pretty solid map. So that's my four favorite Garry's mod maps at the moment. Of course this stuff always changes and feel free to recommend any maps in the comments because I might make another one of these videos in the future and also because I need some new maps to play on. Major lacerations detected.